This feature is a chartreuse tube intruder and we're going to follow our same steps we've been following all the way through. I'm going to use a shaded chartreuse minnow head brush to start this fly out and one could instead one could instead um, put on a ball of ice dub that would be just fine one could spin on a dubbing ball, dubbing brush of um, Aussie Possum. One could put on a thick wad of chenille. It's all good. The idea here in the rear of the fly is to build up some bulk. And what that's going to do is going to help stand. I'm going to put some ostrich on here. It's going to stand it up. So, chartreuse and black is a nice color combination. That's, that's what I'm going with here. And these rear fibers, the idea here is to make them about as long as I'm going to extend the forward when I tie the rest of the fly. So the back end of the fly, everything kind of lines up there. Have a little bit of lateral flash here. as I usually do. Put a couple strands in on one side. <laughs> Maybe I'll just lift them underneath there. See how that works. Then I will rotate them. And here it's starting to rain. Nice December rainy morning. I'm actually going to throw on a few grizzly rubber legs at the rear of this fly. I'm going to put these right on top. And I'm winding these forward. Sometimes I forget and I trim them right by the base, right where I tie them in. And then I just wind up getting a body that's a little bit lumpier in the rear. I like it a little bit better this way. And I'm going to just pull those legs around a little bit. And then as I go back, I'll got a little bit of a division there. I'll keep that, maintain that division with my thread. Some chartreuse flat diamond braid or diamond flat braid as you prefer. As you go through as you watch this whole series, the idea, yes, we're being repetitious, yes, we could show you one fly and let it go at that. You know, chances are good we do things a little bit differently from fly to fly. 
And so while we're, we're trying to repeat, we're, we try to have our basic approach down, sometimes our tube rotates just a little bit. And we have to adjust. So by seeing a number of these, you actually get a little bit better take on what's going on and how to approach the different situations. So I'm going back to the chartreuse, minnow head, brush, and this is very, very bright stuff. This is a low light and murky water fly, or it's a head of tide fly when you've got kings cruising in that are just bold fish, ready to go. Chartreuse is a great color. And there are other, they're all, they're all, you know, what's best. I'm not going to give you rules on that. You've got to decide for yourself. So then I'm going to add um, a black marabou feather on top of this minnow head brush. And I'm tying this in by the tip. Others might suggest tying in by the butt. I know for a fact that both approaches work. And I'm just kind of stuck on tying them in by the tip. Because I like to always have the longest fibers the forefront of the fly. So I tie my saddle hackles in by the tip and my schlap in, in by the tip and my neck hackles by the tip. So I tie in my marabou by the tip. So that's not quite three turns. And the marabou stem is getting a bit on the thick side. I love my Dr. Slick razor scissors. They are sharp. And you had best be careful when you are handling them. knows that I have at times reached in there to snip off the hackle stem and trimmed off my trimmed off my thread instead throw a bit of ostrich right on top Throw in two more pieces of lateral scale on each side of this wing, thorax, fore fly, fore forward section of this intruder. It. How many strands of grizzly? I've got three strands left. I think that's just what I wanted. I'm going to put them right on top because they are going to wiggle around by themselves. Get them trimmed. 
Now I've got a little bit of finish trimming here to do. We're going to, the last thing to put on this one is going to be a cone. I'm going to have a little bit of space here, so I'm going to finish this fly off. Oh, shall I put, why not? Why not? If I've got them, why not use them? A couple of blue grizzly saddle hackles. It adds such a nice touch. Don't doubt that the fish can see these wings, because they can. They have incredible eyesight. Now, whether these, these wings, whether they, how much they add to the fish catching power of this fly, I'm not going to begin to try to answer. Because then I would put myself in the group of people that I I see telling me all sorts of things about why fish bite this and why fish bite that, and I have no idea. There are times when I really think they're wrong, but they might be right. But I think, how can they know that? I've seen so many, so many times when fish take a fly that I thought they shouldn't at a particular time. So, but I love to add those little grizzly hackle points. So the idea here is to have, I'm going to finish this off. I could use a kingfisher blue here also. Try to get this hackle to lay on there the way I want it to. You could use guinea here. You could use a, another black. I have some really nice purple here. And I like this color combination. You could use schleppen. Now I actually, excuse me, I may sneeze here. I'd actually wanted to finish that hackle a little bit closer to the end of my thread wraps so that my cone... I was going to use a sonic disc here and I could still do that. Let me show you what my conflict is, what my reservation is. I use the side disc, it will only slide right to there. You know, I think that's far enough. That's perfectly good. Let's see what happens. If I... and grab a... I grab a... I think I like the cone a little bit better. I think it fits back a little bit. So I'm going to go with the cone. How's that? Sonic disc would work very well. There we go. Chartreuse and black, purple hint, tube intruder. 
That is a super king salmon intruder.